Jesus. Fulfilled all righteous, or is how Jesus and Moses together said to fulfill all righteous. So this morning, as we go to the Lord in word of prayer, we ask that each one of us pray for one another. Father, we thank you this morning for this opportunity that you've given us, Lord, to stand here and to proclaim thy word. Father, we pray this morning that what we read and what we say will be a blessing to each one that hears it. Father, we know that there will be many that hear it that are not here. Lord, we just pray that you would bless our word and that you would uh, uh, help us to be encouraged with this. In Jesus' name, we do pray and thank you for all your blessings. Amen. Amen. All right, in, the, in John, Matthew's gospel, in, uh, in the third ch uh, chapter of, of Matthew, I'll get my tongue out of my teeth in a few minutes. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Notice he emphasized this word preaching. And he was saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And of course, uh, John, I don't know if John knew that Jesus was on his way. I, knew, I know that he knew that John was living, I mean that Jesus was living because they were first cousins. And that uh, John and Jesus met uh, before they were born. And uh, there was a great thing happened uh, in, in that when... Uh, Mary spoke that uh, the baby leaped, Bad. and uh, so they they knew one another. I don't know how well if they played together as children or whatever, but anyway, John knew who Jesus was, and uh, he said, "Here, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." And we know that in the chapter here that Jesus appears to John, and uh, he needs baptism, or he wants him to baptize him. So this is uh, this is something that. Uh, sometimes you kind of scan over, but there was a real, there was a big purpose in this, and uh, we'll get to it in a little bit. But anyway, in verse 3, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying that the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, and make his way straight. Notice here in, in, uh, in this what he was wearing. Uh, it's kind of unusual, but I guess it wasn't for them in that day. And verse 4, and the same John had his raiment of camel hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Over in 2 Kings 1 8, you see uh, uh, another man, uh, I'm trying to think of what his name is now. I can't think of it. Elisha. Elisha. There you go. Thank you. Elisha, he's wearing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, these these girdles and things that uh, uh, even in Jeremiah you can see uh, a picture of a, of a of a girdle using. He told him to take this girdle and to uh, it was it was uh, a, a good girdle, but he took and put it in a hole in the temple or in the wall of the temple, and he covered it up and he left it there for several days. And he went back. He went back and he told him to go back and dig it out. And he did. When he did, it was all marred and nasty and dirty. T typifying the the condition of Israel, right? And so here we see here that John is wearing this girdle of camel's hair, and uh, and, and a, a leather uh, 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 a leather a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. And then verse five, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions about Jordan, Jordan, and were baptized of him. In the Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, uh, in Isaiah, I want to read you just a little bit of something over here. In Isaiah, if you would turn with me to, to verse chapter eleven, and here I, uh, they were. Uh, John the Baptist was preaching to them, and and uh, he was preaching Jesus Christ to them, and and, and grace even. But uh, you know, so many people think, well, there wasn't nothing going on in the Old Testament about this. But listen, if you read your if you read your prophets and all that they had to say, they prophesied Jesus from the, from Adam on. Right. And he was he was he was he was prophesied he would come. And in chapter eleven of uh, of uh, Isaiah uh, eleven uh, one, he says, "And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, Jesus' daddy, and a and a branch out shall grow out of his roots." And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the 
and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And so John the Baptist was, was preaching to these people and he was, he was going to tell them about this same person. Notice here. And shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove the equity of the meek of the earth, and shall not and smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And so this is this is pointing to Jesus Christ, and this is the same one that we're reading about this morning. In John 3 here, and he says, Then went out uh, to Jerusalem and all Judea and all the rain, uh, regions about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Now, why would he have told them that when he was telling he was baptizing these others? Listen. This is all to the Jew. All of this, it's, it's, it's to the Jew. Listen, when we get to Matthew and all this, we think that we've got away from the law. But we're still under the law. They're still, they were still under the law because Jesus Christ was still living. And he was, he was fixing to come there. And, and so this message is still to the Jews. And listen here, he says here, But when he saw many of, of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his valley, he said unto them, Old generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Who has warned you? Now, I have warned the Jews, the, the John the Baptist is saying, I've warned the Jews about this, but who's warned you? Notice he says here, bring forth, therefore, fruit, meet for repentance. In other words, bring something to me and show me that you have understand about Jesus Christ, and I'll baptize you. So here he said, bring forth, therefore, fruit. Fruit, meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And why right. he said, why he was saying this to them about you have Abraham, he says, We have Abraham to our father. And he says here, think not to say that within yourselves. You did Abraham is not your father. Abraham was a, a child of God, but Abraham did not have anything to do with your salvation. And that's why he's saying here, think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. They were, this is the fruit that they was wanting to give John the Baptist. Hey, we're the children of Abraham. That's not sufficient, John says, but you bring me fruit, me for repentance. And so we see here that he's talking, he's talking up here of Jesus Christ coming. And now he says in verse 10, and now also the ax is laid unto the root of the tree, Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. So here, uh, 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 this, this, this thing here of the axe is laid at the, at, at the root of the tree means that, that all sin is cut down. And he says, uh, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. And so John is... John is all through this. He is raising up Jesus Christ. He is telling them about Jesus Christ. And they are still under the law. And, and as, as far as they are concerned, Abraham is their father. Abraham was the one that uh, did it all for them. So here, notice, I want, I want to get to this here. This is the main part of it. But anyway, here he says in, uh, in the uh, 12, Whose, of whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into his garner, but he will burn up the chaff with, his, with unquenchable fire. And he's speaking here of as they gathered the wheat and as they piled it up, they would, they would have these old big paddles and all, and they would pitch it up into the air and it would blow in the chaff and the, the good wheat would come down. It would be good, clean wheat. They would take that chaff that's blown away and they would burn it because it was useless to, to them for anything. And so here's the same picture this morning of salvation as far as uh, when, when, a person, when a person is saved, he's been, he's been lifted up 
The chaff is rolled away from him. His sins is forgiven. He's put in the barn. He's put he's put in the in the in the garner to, for a for keeping. And the chaff that that leaves is a type of sin, and it's taken away from him, and it's burned. It's it's done away with, and he's not guilty of that sin anymore. And so he's a, he's a saved person. And this is why John says here, whose plan is in his hand, talking about Jesus. And he will thoroughly purge his floor. He will sweep it clean and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And so it's a picture of salvation. To me. And so we can, we can believe this. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized. So here's, here's, here, is, here is something that to me is, is very important. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Comest and comest thou to me. So John, had, he knew Jesus. He knew he was the Savior of the world. And he's saying, you don't need to be baptized. You're clean. You're, you're perfect. But why do you come to me asking for baptism? And Jesus said to him, this is what he said. Suffer its soul to be now. In other words, let it happen. Let it happen. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Now, uh, Jesus here is being presented to the Jewish nation as the Messiah. And this baptism is a identification to the Jewish people that he is the Messiah. These people here have been asking all back through the Old Testament, when is the Messiah coming? What is he going to do when he comes? How will we know him when he comes? What will he, what will he do? Now here, Jesus is being presented and he's saying to, to John, this is, this is what they need, and this will uh, fulfill all righteousness because I'm going to be presented to the Jewish nation, and they will see me as the Messiah. But they did not, they did not, they recognized him there, but they did not serve the Christ that they saw there. But anyway, this is why that, that John, uh, or why did Jesus come to John to ask him to baptize him? Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the Jew, the Jew here, they were coming uh, uh, to be baptized to John, and they were, they were doing the same thing as they did back through the Old Testament when they would, when they would bring a, uh, a ram or a, a bull or something uh, and have it killed or, 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 or part of something or another and give it to the priest to help them in. The priest and all, they would go in and wash their hands and, and cleanse their hands to present it on the altar. And here, this, 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 uh, uh, here that in verse 11, he says, I indeed baptize you with water until, I believe it says, until or unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy, I'm not worthy to bear, or I'm not worthy to, to put on and wear. I'm not good enough to wear Jesus Christ's shoes. And he says, he shall, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And this morning, when we, when we experience salvation, when we, through the Holy Spirit, and listen, I believe this morning, I know what I felt, and I believe that what I felt, every saved soul feels is that the Holy Spirit comes in, He burdens, He beckons, He comes in, He burdens our heart, He speaks to our heart, He speaks to our soul, and our inner soul, our spirit, and He makes His abode. And here, uh, this is the same thing that, that He's talking about here when He says that, 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 that He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit does come in and speak to our souls, our inner spirits, and we lose that sin that we have within us 
that we inherited from our grandfather and grandmother Eve and Adam. We lose that. It's gone just like the chaff when the, when the, when the wheat is picked up into the air, the wind and the wind typifies the Holy Spirit. And that wind blows that spirit, that chaff away, mm -hmm. and it settles down. Listen, we're in that garner. We're in that place where that the devil cannot touch us to the point that we lose our salvation. We're safe in that garner, just like the wheat was that the chaff was blown off of. And so this is what I think that he's trying to say when he says that, uh, here when he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto, re unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to wear or to bear. And so then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan, uh, to John to be baptized. And we've done read this. So here we see Jesus being baptized. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. It's a, it's a picture this morning, people, of when we're saved, the Holy Spirit coming in and making its abode with us, and that sin leaving, and we're put in the arm. It's, it's a type of, it's a, it's a picture of salvation to the, uh, to me, it is anyway. And you may disagree with me, but listen, I believe this morning that there's, the Holy Spirit has, has a big job in our salvation. He, Jesus, Amen. Jesus sent him when he got to heaven, the Holy Spirit was there, uh, and he sent him down here and he said, I'll send you the comforter. And listen, that comforter, there's no greater comfort in a, in, than a person can have to know that he has passed from death unto life. There's no, greater, there's no greater comfort. And so he comforts our hearts, and he comforts them in many ways. He, he controls and, and things come around us. He, he, he refers our, our thoughts and all to Jesus Christ, and, and Jesus says, I'll never leave you, Amen. and I'll never forsake you. And listen, he comforts our hearts with these things of people. And so here we see, and, and Jesus, when he, was, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Now notice that after these things, after these things, Jesus was tempted. Now people, this, 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 uh, this uh, chaff blowing, and these wheat falling down doesn't secure us to the point that where that we'll not be tempted. We'll not be uh, 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 fooled with by the devil. And here Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hunger. And people, again this morning, uh, don't, 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 don't put a whole lot of, of confidence in the thing that the devil is not going to bother you. Hmm. Because at your weakest moment, right. at your weakest moment, and people, he knows when you're weak, he knows just exactly how that flesh is. And listen, when you're worried and, and upset about this and about that, then's when he wants to make his appearance and he wants to bother you and it's the same way he was with Jesus here right and Jesus had and, and 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 the thing of it is the boldness of of this and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterward hungry and when the tempter came into him he said if notice here it, it, it's 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 the devil it's it shows how bold he is it shows how uh, he doesn't care for you. He he's bold. He says, "If thou be the Son of God, mm -hmm. and uh, command that these stones be made bread." Now, there was no doubt in the devil's mind that the that the Lord could do that. He could have done that because 
he made he made manna fall for 40 years in the wilderness and he could have made that stone a piece of bread mm -hmm. but here's the thing of it the devil knew his thoughts he knew his he was hungry and had he have done that he would have been in obedience to the devil and he would have he would have then uh, been a partaker of the devil's uh, works. And so listen, what did he say here? And when the tempter came, he said, in, in verse 4, but he answered, and Jesus answered and said unto him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, Amen. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so this morning, when, when we have these problems, and when we think that hey, it's better, it's greener on the other side of the fence. You be careful, you be careful how you cross that fence. Amen. Because listen, everything that glitters is not gold. Right. And this morning, when, when the devil, he knows how to tempt this old earthly bodies of ours, and he'll make it just as glittery and as gold and as shiny as he can, and when he gets you, when he gets it over, you get over there, and you find out that it cankers and rusts and is not worth a nickel, and you're in trouble. Right. And so this morning, I'm, I, I believe you, I believe you un, need to understand that, and I, do, I believe you do. So he says, here, the devil, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, now notice where he said it, on the highest, highest place around. Giving, giving him honor, showing him honor. But listen, in in that in that showing him honor, he had trickery in his mouth. He he said here, notice, and he said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, again, what does he say? If cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And it's in Psalms, the, uh, I forget now what uh, uh, verse it is in Psalm, but uh, I might find it just, uh, I, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, it, it's in, written in the book of Psalms, the same words. He quoted the same scripture to Jesus as, as David had wrote down. And so he put that big zero around if. Now, Jesus, Jesus could, he could have, he could have, he could have, he walked on water. Right. He walked on water. He could have he could have raised up and he could have flew or he could have done whatever he wanted to. But listen, it's the devil trying to get him to obey him and let the devil have uh, uh, power over him. So Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. And so again this morning, like I spoke about the grass and, and, and the gold glittering and all this. When you see it, make sure what you see is what you see and not what you want to see because he can he can fix those eyes before they can see about anything he wants them to see. Again, the devil taketh him up into the exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee. Now He's a liar, and even if God gave him this power, he's a still a liar. And he said, here, I'll give thee uh, all these things if thou will fall down and worship me. So he had his, his mind just on Jesus and, and trying to break Jesus. Jesus said unto him, get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And so this morning, these things that I've wrote, read to you about the devil and about how things are, uh, uh, how you're tempted and all this, be sure and remember some of these things. And when, when it comes, Walk, walk slowly about these things. Amen. Take, take your time about making any kind of decision because, listen, he's always there. He's in, listen, in everything that goes on in your life, he's standing right by there watching. 
And if God don't, through the Holy Spirit, warn you and, and keep you out of these things, listen, you'll get in trouble. Right. And sometimes these troubles get serious. And so, and he, he the seriouser they are, the better he is. Because he wants to get God's people into trouble. He wants them to, uh, him to be able to, to go to God and say, yeah, there's one of yours. He fell for, he fell for that. He's greedy. And so this is, this is, this is some of the things that we have to be, uh, be careful about because it's out there. Mm -hmm. And we need to stay just as close to the Lord as we can because uh, it's not going to be long, people, till we're going to all be gone. Amen. And we're going to be with him in heaven. And uh, this thing that when we look back, if we do look back, it will be something that's uh, uh, foolishness to us. And there's one scripture in the, in the in the Bible, and I was trying to think about it, but the devil is, in, in one way, is revealed to some people, and, and they will say, is this the one that we feared? Is this the one that caused us all these troubles? Yes. He is just a speck in a universe. He's nothing. But he's got enough, he's got enough knowledge about this, the fleshly man and the fleshly person that he knows which buttons to push, and uh, he gets everything that he's got from God. God allows him to do these things. And sometimes, you know, uh, it, uh, it it hurts when, when we do things that we shouldn't do and we have to uh, pay a price for it. But, you know, the, the Lord is good to us, and he, he forgives us. Amen. And uh, he, he brings us, he brings us back... Uh, uh, to in good standing with him, and uh, he he's just good to us. Amen. And so uh, think of all these things that we've read, and and, and and I know that it's not been no no real eye opener to you, but think of them because we need to be reminded of Satan and how he how he works and, and things like that, that where we can we can see him when we do when, when he comes around. So thank you all so much for listening to to our lesson, our reading this morning. Thank God.